Christine H. And I'm Renee Davis here with Wildcat Report. And fitting the season, we have a spooky broadcast for you guys filled with haunted reports for today, Halloween. One of our reporters, Dan, got a chance to visit Council Bluffs for a so-called haunted graveyard. Maybe some haunted gravestones? Maybe. For Halloween, many people will celebrate the holiday by visiting a haunted house. But if the haunted houses aren't scary enough for you, try visiting a truly haunted place. Around the Omaha area, there are many different places that have been reported to have paranormal activity, one of which is the Black Angel, located in Council Bluffs. The Black Angel is a statue built by Daniel Chester French, the man who sculpted the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. The Angel is a memorial built in the memory of Ruth Ann Dodge, wife of General Grenville Dodge. The Angel is a representation of a dream Mrs. Dodge had the three nights before her death. According to her family members, Mrs. Dodge had a vision of a beautiful angel carrying a small bowl of water in one hand and the other extended towards Mrs. Dodge. The angel spoke to her two times, saying, Drink, I bring you both promise and a blessing. On the third visit, Mrs. Dodge drank from the bowl and died shortly after. From the time the statue was sculpted, rumors have developed about paranormal activity. Four major myths circle around the statue. Myth number one. The black angel is made out of bronze, yet turns black and is continued to after a renovation. The angel statue jumps off its pedestal and flies around at night. The statue is said to weep real tears at night. Look into the statue's eyes at midnight, you will die in two days later. None of these myths have been proven, but if you want to check it out for yourself, just go across the river to Fairview Cemetery in Council Bluffs. This has been Daniel Thomas reporting. Thanks, Dan. Okay, and seniors, cap and gown is here. Make sure you get to the Johnston's table. They will be here today, tomorrow, and Friday during lunch hours. So make sure you get there. They need your minimum deposit of $40, even if what you order is more than that, because we all know our moms ordered way more than we all need. But make sure you get to their table. Exactly, it's very important. But since I'm a junior, I don't have to worry about it. Just us seniors, but hey. In advanced computer tech, I got to make my own website and edit videos. Business is leadership, fun, intelligent. Because of AP Micro, I know how businesses work on a local scale. Personal finance, I learned how to manage my money. Balance a checkbook and avoid credit card debt. Business is community. Engaging and for everyone. Accounting to prepare me for college accounting. After keyboarding, I will be a faster hyper. And know how to format papers. Business is strategic, competitive, creative. In fashion marketing, I learned how basic fashion trends were. Your basic marketing skills for fashion. AP Max are talking about global economics. Business is rewarding. Teamwork. Real world. In marketing one, I learned how to make a product plan. Why marketing works. A product get to consumers. Computer tech helps me to make better presentations and understand Microsoft programs. International business talking about cultural dif differences and global marketing. Business law taught me how civil laws are applied to running business. <laughs> Because of Accounting One, I know all about the accounting cycle. Business is making new friends. The power to give back, and unlike anything else. show choirs are putting on a premiere red carpet show before their whole season starts. It's Tuesday, November 6th from 6.30 to 8.15. Now we all know our parents will be sitting around the TVs watching all the news of the election, but hey, we can make it down to Millard West to support our show choir. 
Exactly. I know you all know a few students in show choir. And advanced ticket sales are November 1st and 2nd during lunch. And now that show choir will be wearing all their red sparkly dresses like they always do, a lot of us tonight will be wearing different costumes, carrying on the tradition of dressing up during Halloween, even if we aren't trick-or-treating. Hi, I'm Faith Kane with the Wildcat Report. October 31st is a night where ghouls, ghosts, and goblins come out to play for one night a year. People of all ages come out on Halloween to trick or treat, hand out candy, or to get a scare. Although we may all do something different on Halloween, there is one thing that we have in common that we have at least done once. Get a costume. I am dressing up like a princess and he's dressing up like a prince. I'm going to be Megan from Bridesmaids for Halloween. She just kind of inspires me and she's kind of awesome and um, she's a cool chick. For Halloween I'm going to dress up as a devil. I'm not dressing up because I don't like dressing up. For a younger child, Halloween may be a time to dress in their favorite costume or a day just to get candy. As kids grow older, their costumes may seem to change to something a bit more revealing. When I was younger, I used to dress in like really cute costumes that, I don't know, just little kids, like, and now I dress in like more revealing costumes, like not like baby costumes. For costumes, when I was like a little girl, I would always dress up like princesses. I used to be like a princess and then one year I was one of those Dalmatian dogs and then another year I was a lion and then one year I was a unicorn. I like the animals. I've just kind of switched from animals to humans. I used to always dress up in really weird costumes because it was Halloween. I used to be, I don't know, like a witch. I was a cat one year. For Halloween, students go to places like Halloween Express and Nobby's to pick out the best costumes. On Halloween night, they prepare together by getting dressed. Some may choose the funny costume, while others may go for a little bit riskier. I think risque costumes are okay because it's only one time a year and it's like a free pass, I guess. The risque costumes are fine too. I think it's kind of inappropriate. It kind of makes me uncomfortable because I don't want to see any of that. And um, so it's kind of gross, but you know, in the judgments, it's okay. Do what you want, just try to do it nicely. Okay, I think like risque costumes aren't really a big deal. Like it's just for one day and if people like want to dress up that way, then it's not really a big deal. I think girls dress up in like revealing costumes to like get more attention. Well, I just feel like if they want to dress like that, then it's fine because it's their choice. Everyone has their own costume style, but in the end, Halloween is a night of fun. I'm Faith Kane. Thanks, Faith, and District Volleyball is coming up today, guys. Millard West is hosting it, so it's so easy to get out to the game and support our team, so make sure you go. Um, Millard West is playing Lincoln High at 4.30, the first game, and if we make it to the championship game, which we will, fingers crossed, it'll be at 7 p.m. And Millard West is versing our rivals, Millard South, at Buell Stadium on Friday for state playoffs. And you can purchase tickets for $5 in the accounting office till Thursday. Yep. And now that all the fall sports are kind of coming to a close with all the playoffs, we are going right into winter sports. The kickoff date for that is Monday, November 12th. But before that and all the snow comes, let's say a farewell to all the fall sports and activities that we love. Hey, what's up, Miller West? I'm Connor Lussell with the Walk Hair Report. Here to give you guys a break from all those Halloween stories we got going on. Football had a game on Friday night. They played Lincoln Pius. They won 33-17. With that win, gives us a chance to play Millard South. Game is this Friday at Buell Stadium. We're on the away side though. Some of you may have seen some of the volleyball pictures hanging around in the comments. It's district time for girls volleyball. Game is on Halloween night at Millard West. It's $5 for adults and $4 for students. Any student or staff member who dresses up will receive a free drink and candy at the game. Girls softball plays last in state, losing their first game 4-3 to Benson, our second game 11-12 to Grand Island. But overall, in the Nebraska State rankings, they did place third. On November 12th, the Miller West Marching Band competed in the 2012 NSVA Marching Contest. They placed third only behind Bellevue East and Bellevue West. Millard West had a fall play called Noises Off. The play was a success, and the next play will be Waiting for a Lefty. 
will be performed on November 29th. For Millard West, Boys Tennis, Gabe Schrank made it to the third round but lost to Grand Island. Prep ended up winning it all for Boys Tennis. And Caitlin Strudoff of Millard West placed fourth for the girls' golf. Grand Island ended up winning it all. Finally, winter sports start November 12th. Students need to bring $60 to the activities office and need a physical before they can participate. I'm Carlos with Wildcat Report. Back to you guys. Thank you, Connor. Good luck to all participating in the winter sports this year. I know you guys will do great. Council Bluffs held a 5K zombie-themed race known as the Running Dead. Hosted at West Fair Fairgrounds, the obstacle course style race is designed to raise money for the Huntsman Cancer Foundation and provide entertainment for runners and spectators. Well, the zombie run is myself. I chase other people with flags around their waist that represent lives. They each get three flags. It's my job to take them. So if they get all taken before they finish, then they turn into zombies. Kevin, what exactly made you want to participate in the zombie run? Well, I got to fight in 30 days. You know, this is a good run for conditioning on a weekend. Nobody likes to work out on the weekend, so this is perfect for a weekend workout. Growing up, did you have a favorite zombie movie or zombie video game? Um, not so much zombie movie, but, you know, the killer clowns that are from space. You know, that was a movie that really scared me. I guess those could be zombies, but it, it did. It really scared me. What do you think was the coolest part of the whole zombie run? I think the coolest part about the zombie run is that... See our makeup, and you know they they get into it, so we get to get into it, and that's the best part. You know, it's tag pretty much. I'm ready to go right now. I'm ready to chase. I can tap the bitch right now to bite at them, but we have to wait till it starts, which is in about 30 minutes. So. Last Saturday's 5K race had a total of 600 contestants. Although not everybody made it past the zombies, everyone received a medal for participating. And Council Bluffs successfully raised money for the Huntsman Cancer Foundation. This has been Mitch Gross. Wildcat Crazy t-shirts will be sold in the scratch post for $2, first come first serve, so get there quick. And our last story of the broadcast is about a unique haunted attraction that's come to Omaha in the last couple years. Hello, I'm Brennan Davis with the Wildcat Report. Phobia, a local Halloween attraction, has a unique spin compared to other Halloween attractions located all around Omaha. Nightmare on Q Street is Omaha's newest haunted attraction. Uh, we have two attractions, Phobia and Raven's Nightmare. In Phobia, you can make your money back for all the attractions you pay for. It's a lot of fun, you know. We get a lot of a lot of good people coming through, you know. And every once in a while, we get some pretty good scares going on, you know. It's fun to get into the act and everything, be your character. Before participants may enter the attraction, they must sign a waiver as well as their parents if they are under 18. Probably thousands by now, but uh, only like a handful have made it through it including like 11 year old girl and an old lady. Employees at Phobia strive to frighten each and every person who walks in the door, hoping that the people get so scared they will not finish and receive their money back. Well, we try and scare you more. Uh, we're in your face. Uh, you have to sign a waiver to get in. Uh, it's much more interactive than others, I feel. The runners, you know, like they, they kind of, you know, bring out the, I guess the psycho edge in all of us, you know, and get into the part and whatnot. So, yeah. Those participating express their thoughts on the attractions and what they are most looking forward to within the unique venue. I'm most excited for probably like clowns I guess. I've been, I've been here last year and I'm most excited for like how scary it's gonna be. I love getting scared. Come over here you know get challenged and phobia you know see if you can make it through. Uh, you have to come find out, but uh, drink something, do something, eat something. If you dare to try this latest Halloween attraction, you can come to Funplex on 72nd and Q all through October and November 1st. Are you up for the challenge? This has been Brandon Davis reporting. That's all we have for you guys. I'm Brandon Davis, and I'm ready to trick or treat tonight. And I am Bailey H, and this is the Wildcat Report. Happy Halloween!